Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I'll be doing another academic video. So I asked one of my friends by the name of Ezra Koza, who is currently attending at University of Pretoria to kind of share his journey on how he got into medical school because he didn't get in the traditional route, meaning um, straight from high school. So if you're looking to get into medical school and you're busy either with your metric bridging course or you busy with um, another qualification but ultimately looking to get into medical school then this is the video for you without any waste of time let's get into the video greetings everyone my name is Ezra Koza and I'm here to share my journey um, with you guys in order to help you guys I'm trying to be the mentor or perhaps the information giver which I wish I had in my high school years as well as my tertiary institution years First of all, I would like to start by saying that the life or the journey to medicine starts in grade 11. That will be your marks and also the subjects which you choose. Fine, um, what do I mean by saying it starts in grade 11? Grade 11 is just the phase whereby you introduce yourself to the tertiary institution. You're creating an image for yourself by the marks which you're going to get there. So, the important subjects which you have to take is physics, maths, English, as well as life science. Life science is important in a way that, but then in the curriculum when they choose which ones, um, like the APS scores, life science is not really um, pointed out as the main subject, but then it is, why? Because like when you're doing medicine, you're basically doing life science. So what I have to say about this is that um, the APS scores, the subject, maths have to get like above five, level five, physics above level five, as well as English above level five. So that's your grade, uh, grade 11 uh, results, like the final year's results. So moving on to grade 12. Oh, I'm sorry, I have my cue cards here just so to show you that I'm prepared for this. I'm trying to give as much information as I can give. So moving on to grade 12, this is where you are maintaining your image. This is when you prove yourself to them that what I showed you in grade 11, I still what I am, or I'm even better than that. So, what's here to say is that um, this is the year that you apply at the tertiary institution, and also you have to do your NBTs. NBTs, these are a devil. If you're not like a smart kid, or just an average student, just like me, this was a devil for me. Why? Because like I was not really prepared for them. I wrote them in April and at that time um, our school, our school syllabus was quite slow so we haven't covered a lot of work for it. So my tip, this is the first tip, is that rather apply for the NBTs for the latest date, like check the NBT test dates and then choose the last one because after that you would have covered enough work in order to understand those NBTs and also to like write them in an effective manner. So, NBT is still on NBTs. What are NBTs? National Benchmark Tests. So, what do they do? It's like a way in which they measure your proficiency level compared or like in a way in which the tertiary level demands you to be. So, they test what? They test your um, academic literacy, quantitative literacy, as also uh, maths, which is the one which is most important. With me, I went to write it on April, as I said, and I haven't covered enough work. And I first wrote the maths one. And like, I did so bad that I didn't even want to go back and write it. So, what can you do in order to pass the NBTs? First of all, the date, as I also mentioned. Secondly, try to get like preparation tests for the NBTs. There are preparation tests on the internet. Just search them out or like ask for help in order to get them right. So that's all I can say about grade 12. This is me helping grade 11s and grade 12. Now, moving on, still on the grade 12 though. Apply to as many institutions as you can. Like, there's never too much. This is what I can tell you. With me, I felt myself, cause like, I thought I was smart. I was smart back then in high school. So what I did is that I never applied to many institutions. I only applied at SMU and VETS and only for medicine then after that 
I told my father to apply on the other ones and he applied for other things which I didn't even want. So lesson is try to partake in your decisions, like involve yourself, get as much information as you can about these institutions and the careers which you want. So why do I say apply to as many institutions as you can? This increases your chances of being taken at a tertiary institution. For example, um, UP wants like 75% in order for you to get um, a space or like to be accepted for medicine. Meanwhile, um, University of Free State just wants 70%. And also, another thing to the grade 12 is that try to involve yourself in extracurricular activities as well as cultural um, activities. In cultural activities, what do I mean by that? Like, just try to do some debates or just become a prefect, just, just be well-mannered. And extracurricular activities like doing sports and stuff like that, it also adds points to your APS. And I also learned that um, with University of Free State, you actually get regional points. If you stay in Free State, you get like six points. And if you stay in Northern Cape, you get like three points. But if you stay elsewhere, you get zero points. Another tip. The tip is relocate to Free State or just ask for someone's address. Okay, it's a bit illegal, but then yeah, tell her what you must to get where you want to be. So why do I refer to Free State? Well, the reason is after I got into UP and then I met someone who told me about Free State, I actually wanted to go to Free State. Like, I love it. So, and also, like, the way they make it easy for you to go into medicine, also, like, when you're inside medicine, it's quite fun the way they describe it it's quite fun and also the reason that it's five years there while as with other institutions it's six years so far it's the only institution which i know that it does medicine for five years and also like making it making it easy for you to go into medicine so as like i mentioned free state a lot of time then um the next one after that after i applied i never actually went to a university um, or let me say a tertiary institution why because like my marks were not that good in grade 12 I have to say I felt like someone's grading was working over time there because wow I, the marks which I got were not really good I got like a level 4 for math and also a level 4 for physics and remember I only applied for medicine and also um, other things which I didn't want so I couldn't go there so I decided to go upgrade my marks so I upgraded my marks, I upgraded them in star schools. There, things went well. I passed well, I did things well, it was nice. I got like level 5 and level 6, level 6 for physics and level 5 for maths. Then now, I did the same mistake again, applying only in two teacher institutions. This was by myself, I didn't apply for anything else besides that. So, I went to SME, then when I got there, I showed them my marks. This was the most painful thing because like that guy told me he was like yeah you do qualify for the karateira thing to be taken but then look at these other marks and i saw like people getting level sevens there and there was me with six and five and i was just like that hurt me in a way because like he, he, he literally told me do you think we would take you and not take these students that was hard that hit me hard never did i didn't want to do anything after that I just went straight home but when I was going home, my brother actually applied for me in um, UP and he applied for, that was a late application by the way, um, for a course named an extended BC, BSc program, which is done in Mamelodi. Now talking about that, this one is to help like, um, still grade 12, I'll come back to um, postgraduate, so now we're still in grade 12. So after applying and then you find that never got accepted for your things also apply try to apply for bsc or the extended program which is given in up i don't know where else it's given but then yeah you can just search that on yourself now just know that up gives it so i attended that extended program in up so people used to call it great they think okay that was a joke at that time yeah that's a joke which like they referred to like, up students really call people from mamelodi um uh, pupils of great they think so yeah, why do they say that? It's because it's basically your grade 12, which is in the tertiary level, 
so you do your grade 12 but then they're also introducing like the atmosphere of a university so what i'm trying to say is that you will find it a bit easy and a bit difficult it's actually balanced because it's introducing you to the tertiary life but then at the same time like also giving you your past life which was high school so you might enjoy that and also it's quite easy to get like good marks when you're at um, the extended program you can get like really good marks and you can switch to medicine so only one year you can only do it one year get your marks and then you go it's guaranteed like it's guaranteed that you'll get into medicine that's what i did so what did i do though i wanted to do radiology and there is radiography and there is radiology i didn't know that i was not quite informed about my things hence i said like try to involve yourself with the careers, careers which you're choosing try to do a research try to go and do job shadowing try to ask for help from mentors or like people have the knowledge i didn't do that i was so relaxed about my thing so in my melody i chose the wrong course i chose radiography thinking it's radiology not knowing that radiology is a specialty in medicine you have to do medicine first in order to do radiology so that was a mistake which i did i did well passed well but then chose the wrong course now i'm damned again so yes passed i was doing radiography i did well in radiography as well what did i do i did those extracurricular activities and also cultural activities just to make my name known just to stand out from the rest of the um, students that helps that helps please take it into consideration good marks extracurricular activities as well as cultural activities that will help you just focus on that and also doing bsc can help you can do it for six months and then you switch to medicine but it's quite difficult it's quite hard so you just have to be determined so yeah now helping the post grads since i did b-rad i got good marks and i also switched so yeah it's just about getting good marks and it can be easier for you to switch if you get those good marks and also do the extracurricular activities as i already mentioned so after the switch now we're in medicine yeah that's when things got hard like that's when i realized like if i didn't really have a passion for this i would have quit it a long time ago what happens is all those study methods which you were used to in high school or like whether you did another course it, it, it changes you have to change it like completely your life basically changes like your whole life changes your sleeping hours change and i remember like this lecture told me like, um a normal human being needs seven hours seven to eight hours to sleep that's what i also know and then she was like you are a health sciences student you are a medical student that's a fantasy that's not going to happen that's a myth health sciences students only take four hours to sleep imagine four hours what's that so like that's why i'm saying like it's a whole life changing thing you have to do sacrifices you have to cut down on socials you have to there's a lot of changes so like if you're not passionate enough that won't work out for you so my last say on this is that be passionate about it don't do it just for the money because if you do it just for the money you will end up with a miserable life and hence be depressed so have passion for it and have a reason why my reason why is because of my mother i always wanted to do this but also she also pushed me so whenever i'm studying and i feel like i'm tired i just remember her words and telling me like i have to be this and i can do it so yeah have a reason why um also look at what you will lose if you're doing it is it worth losing or is it not worth it just don't do it and also um what i've learned in medicine is that you actually get your freedom after you specialize before specializing it's more like a trap and those who like 
are doing it for money they usually get trapped in it because you become a gp and a gp like works much as harder like as every like every specialty so like now if you do a specialty like it's not that hard you have some free time and you get more money in a way if you need money or whatever your reason is but then what i'm trying to say is that you fight to get into medicine and you also fight to get out getting out is doing a specialty whether it's your radiography gyno or whatever whatever it might be so what i'm telling you is that there's still a fight inside which you have to fight you have to get good marks in order to specialize if you don't get good marks you won't specialize and you get trapped you won't have a life you always be working the money which you wanted you now it will be like basically spent by the people around you but when you won't even spend it because you're always at work and you'll be miserable your whole life so try to think about your choices i'm not trying to scare you i'm just telling you how it is something which i wish i was told but then even now that i know i still want to do it because i have passion for it and also last thing i'm done with my cue cards thank you last thing is try balancing your life whether before you go in and even when you're inside what do i mean like before you go in before when you're in grade 12 just try to have as much fun as you can have and also balance with your studies now when you're inside try to study like with every chance that you get talk to your friends that's fine go out that's fine but balance it by studying each and every day so what to take home from what i've said today is that apply to as many institutions try to apply for other courses like bsc as well as the extended program and um try to look here to free state <laughs> okay that's a joking but yeah so um what else can you take home um is that you should do extracurricular activities you should do like cultural activities and um let me see, um, the last one would be getting good marks. But it's not the last one, that should be your first one, actually. Get good marks, like, the whole time. For you to stand out, like, to be outstanding, and also to be chosen. Just what they told me, but, like, do you think we'll take you these marks and, like, don't take these students who got level 7. So, yeah, that's it for me, and thank you. I hope this helps you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I just wanted to mention as a side note if you are currently busy with a degree or a postgraduate qualification and your metric doesn't meet the minimum requirements or the advice that you rewrite those maybe you can like rewrite in the first six months because wherever you apply they will always ask for your metric results and if now you're competing with someone who is doing a um, degree and you guys range in the same kind of category but this person qualifies for medicine straight from high school then obviously they're gonna favor the person that qualifies more than you even though you have your 60s 70s or 80s that you're getting currently so yeah without any waste of time i just wanted to say thank you and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions of some sort thank you bye